The seemingly enigmatic character of the Platonic Socrates can be difficult to interpret, but the lessons from his apology are too valuable to ignore or simply skip over. Today, we'll expatiate on three of these lessons so that you can better apply them to aspects of your own life. The first lesson is how to properly conduct a debate or argument with someone who doesn't share your same perspective on the topic of discussion. I'm sure you've noticed how a large portion of our politicians conduct their debates and campaigns through discrediting their opponents. In my opinion, this is deplorable and should be avoided if you wish to keep your self-respect. Instead, we should base our arguments on wisdom, logic, and reasoning. If your argument is valid, there will be no need to stoop to insults and discreditation because the truth of your argument will be clear from your reasoning. If it is not, no matter what you say, they will likely still disagree. Such is the nature of cognitive dissonance. In this case, you may as well hold on to your dignity. Evident by the outcome in the trial of Socrates, there will be times that no matter the strength of your argument or consistency in your reasoning, people will disagree and believe what suits them best. After all, we tend to prefer our own nature over that of others. When the sweet seller beats the dentist for office, we call this a demagoguery. If this becomes the predominant practice in a democracy, then the country's education system has failed its citizens. This explains, in a basic sense, why Socrates distrusted democracy. The next lesson is behind Socrates' reasoning for the Oracle of Delphi's declaration that he was the wisest of all men. Socrates said this in his Apology, I am wiser than this man, for neither of us appear to know anything great and good. But he fancies he knows something, although he knows nothing. Whereas I, as I do not know anything, so I do not fancy I do. The lesson is this, that while you may know a great deal about a subject, you do not know it all and are fallible. If you can accept this, you will always be open to gaining new knowledge, but if you think that you already know it all, how can you possibly learn anything further? As possibly the most quintessential quote from his apologies, Socrates said, life without this sort of examination is not worth living. Examine your own thoughts as well as the thoughts of those around you. Seek the truth, and when you find it, Examine that as well. Next is a lesson on sticking to your convictions, and if necessary, to the death. We should not interpret this lesson as to blindly follow any belief, but only those that we have closely examined to be true, just, and good. Socrates said, You are mistaken, my friend, if you think that a man who is worth anything ought to spend his time weighing up the prospects of life and death. He has only one thing to consider in performing any action. That is, whether he is acting rightly or wrongly, like a good man or a bad one. It is clear by Plato's account of his trial that Socrates had a few chances to escape, but he chose to reveal the travesty that was the Athenian political system. This lesson, more than any other Socrates embodied, a martyr to free thought and inspiration to many future great minds. Without the conviction of this singular man and the artistry of Plato's writing, philosophy may not be where it is today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the information helpful. If you did, think about subscribing and checking out a few of my other videos. You may find more helpful information to apply to your life. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk philosophy with me. Until next time.